friends in this video we will discuss detailed explanation and answers for UPSC 2021 mains essay paper the essay paper has got eight questions part a four questions and part b four questions in this video I am discussing only part a four questions in my next video I will discuss the part b remaining four questions friends this year's UPSC essay paper is quite different all the eight topics are philosophical and statement based I mean there is no topic specifically on the environment or on the women or internal security or uh, central state relations so no topic is very specific to a sector every statement is very general and to explain the statement you can use polity economy history philosophy ethics whatever hence so from now onwards from next year onwards every student should practice this kind of essays before going to the exam so let us look at the uh, questions friends these are the two sections the eight questions in this video the first four questions i will be explaining if you observe these four questions mostly for example fourth question real is rational and rational is real third question wantlessness is utopian materialism is chimera second question perception of me your perception of me is a reflection of you one statement my reaction to you is an awareness of me it's almost like you know uh, philosophical essays giving two statements almost you know which are uh, either correlatory or which are comparative so that you can compare and write only the first one is a single statement the process of self-discovery has now been technologically outsourced so we will start with the first topic before that friends i want to tell you one thing some students uh, after writing the essay paper who have come to me said that sir i don't know whether the statement they have given i have interpreted clearly or not i mean they are worried that they might not have understood the statement properly maybe they misunderstood the statement because of which the entire essay essay might have gone wrong friends don't worry there is nothing like that in fact you no need to even know who said the statement for example if you look at the questions for example this statement is said by somebody called hegel but you no need to know who said the statement under which context they said the statement you no need to know any of these things the statement what you understand from the statement clearly explain the meaning of the statement support it with evidence provide a logical structure with examples and conclude with the suggestions even if you have understood the statement in a wrong way still it is okay still you will get very good marks as long as you are clearly able to explain what you mean by the statement and how logically you explain the statement so don't think whether you understood the statement rightly or wrongly because based on that there is no much mocks okay friends so coming to the first essay friend before starting the essay let me tell you you should not do some common mis these common mistakes in any of the upsc essay one mistake is some students completely write negative aspect for example see the process of self discovery has now been technologically outsourced that means to understand ourselves for self discovery these days we are using technology mostly mostly technology is being used to understand about ourselves now some students write only negative aspect they will say that it is very bad how uh, see uh, we should never we should never go for technology to understand about ourselves there are other methods standard methods so they will keep on blaming technology and write negative aspect do not do that see if your perspective is that technology should not be used you write 70% of the essay explaining why technology should not be used for self discovery but at least 30% you write the positive aspect how technology can be used and how it is beneficial for self discovery for example if somebody thinks that technology should be used you write 70% only 30% write why it should not be used also so the first mistake that you should not do is that never go single sided always address both sides of the coin but you can stress on one side on which you have more logic which you believe second thing 
never write a single dimension for example the process of self discovery self discovery generally means discovering about ourselves what i want what i lack what kind of person i am my interest strength weakness is a self is personal but even then don't write only about self means as a person write something about self discovery means how india self discovered about its geography its economy its history at least 20 to 30% 70% you can write about uh, self discovery of a person okay so that's what i call as multi dimensional never keep your essay as a single dimensional essay keep it multi dimensional okay and third friends third friends you should clearly explain what you mean by the statement without explaining what you mean by the statement if you just go on giving examples and all definitely evaluator will feel that okay this candidate does not have a clarity he has no stand he is explaining something so always explain the meaning i mean for these kind of essays for philosophical essays statement based essays if you make yourself initially only make it clear what you understand without that without explaining not go forward okay also friend the fourth mistake some people do is some people write only examples throughout the essay do not do that some people write only theory throughout the essay do not do that write some theory some opinion and substantial examples so combine them in that way only you can you can score more marks okay now let us go and discuss this essay friends as i tell you as i told you first try to explain the meaning of the statement very clearly and also if possible if possible along with the meaning of the statement try to tell the context under which this topic becomes important presently if it's possible okay try the context also for this topic i will be explaining you the context also similarly friend for example as I told you know self discovery means not only personal level but also national level also you can write self discovery so in this essay i'll be writing both but my stress is mostly on the personal level only some stress is on national level but if you want if you have more points on national you can write more mostly on how india understood about itself how india discovered about itself through technology if you think you have more points you stress more on that okay then write both advantages of using technology disadvantages of using technology also and also friends as i told you write more dimensions economy geography politics as much as possible okay towards the end i always tell you friends my opinion is in the conclusion better give some suggestions some good ideas your opinions that would add value to your essay let's go forward first what is the meaning of statement according to me the, the statement means that these days we are using technology to understand about ourselves that is the meaning of statement now now i will spend some time one or two paragraphs explain about keywords explain the keywords in the essay one keyword is self discovery so what is self discovery self discovery means knowing about our interest our traits our personality our strength weakness what kind of person we want to marry what kind of job would be suitable for us how much time we have to spend on different aspects basically means what is the purpose of my life these kind of things is called self discovery that's what i'll explain in the first paragraph or second paragraph okay and friend see actually this is a question from time immemorial from last right from the human evolution right from several years every human being wants to know about himself so today technology is there but even before technology even before 5th 10th or years before also in every generation people want to know about themselves every person want to know about himself or herself okay then friends my i would be writing that i would be writing that generally generally the best way to self discover the best way to understand about yourself is consciously observe your actions when you get an emotion understand the emotion when you do an action try to understand what action you have done if some th thoughts are going in the mind try to consciously observe what you are thinking what you are feeling what you are doing that is the best way to understand about yourself i will write, write this in the beginning because i want to make it clear from my side to the evaluator that according to me what is the best way of self discovery according to me the best way of self discovery is to consciously observe yourself your thoughts actions behavior manners everything your feelings emotions everything okay buddha said that means buddha actually followed the path of meditation 
through meditation for several years through meditation months or years i'm not very clear through meditation he realized about himself about himself so now friends now i am going to build the context for the essay see here the essay says that these days technology is used for self discovery so i would be building the context first of all why technology came into picture friends the reason is this is the age of technology all of us are spending lot of our time with technology most of us are actually addicted to technology so previously we used to know about ourselves through others friends or family or meditation whatever now we are trying to find about ourselves through technology only why because we are trusting it so much actually in one way we are so most of us are controlled by technology technology will tell us what you have to do what you have to eat today what you like which kind of girl you have to marry you understand so I, i am building up the context as we are spending more time trusting it it almost become indispensable technology became indispensable most of us addicted so much addicted the day to day life day to day life entire day most of the day we are controlled by social media technology mobile phone whatever friends that to such an extent that we are outsourcing technology for our self discovery also but the point is how much can we trust really can we really trust the results of technology can we believe what technology tells us is really we is it real way of self discovery that's a question friends as i told you in the remaining part of essay i will be explaining both sides to what extent you can trust the uh, technology to what extent you should not trust technology also now first i will be starting with the personal level before national level personal level for self discovery individual self discovery how technology is used and what are the advantages or disadvantages of that one as i told you i would generally prefer i would tell that clearly in the essay also i would prefer self discovery through yoga meditation pranayama conscious observation by communicating with elders people whom i think have wisdom people whom i think know more about me i'll talk to them spend time with them that's how i will try to discover myself but now everything is done through mobile phone for example yoga through mobile app yoga is there mobile app or you want to consult somebody there is a mobile app which will suggest you tell you what you have to do and how you have to do to discover about yourself for example i want to discover about my health how healthy i am how are my health habits diet habits shall i change all these things means what is best for me what is more suitable for me i want to know for that these days people are using the app called healthy fami you might have seen friend in most of the youtube suggestions healthy fami app is coming as an ad the ad comes so much repeatedly repeatedly that most of us will, will uh, you know uh, will try to install the healthy fami app and through the app we'll try to understand about our health so through the, through this example of current affairs i would i would like to explain how much we are dependent on the mobile apps or technology to discover about ourselves in this case our health then friend eq for example i want to know about my emotional emotional intelligence emotional quotient the best way is the long way the long process whenever i get any feeling or any emotion i have to observe it under which situation what kind of feeling i am getting i have to consciously observe it for a long time and discuss about those feelings to somebody who is very close to me that's how i can understand my emotional quotient that's how i can manage my emotions and others emotions but these days some mobile tools applications self help tools they call it as are being made famous through which people are trying to find their eq okay similarly intelligence quotient for example i want to know my relationship status is my relationship somebody really strong or weak for that one also mobile apps are there mobile apps are there expenditure for example how i am spending my salary am i spending my salary right way or wrong way how much i am spending in the capital expenditure how much in the revenue whatever disposable so that one also through mobile applications apps and technology tools financial tools there are some fin financial technology companies called as fintech companies called as fintech financial technology company which provide this kind of service also to discover about your expenditure discover about whether you are spending in the right way or wrong way so we are so much dependent on technology these days then friend finally i would writing my suggestion what is my suggestion i feel that i feel that technology shall be used only as a complementary thing we should not replace our conscious observation technology 
the best way is to understand the above things by introspection and self assessment all technology comes into place in few places and better to use both of them in a balanced way both of them is technology as well as your own wisdom in a balanced way friends i always feel that opinions uh, you know give more marks in the essay rating you have to tell your opinion almost for 20% of the essay what is your opinion particularly these kind of essay topics which are philosophical statements your opinion matters most if it is a current affairs topic maybe they won't you know discuss much your opinion but these kind of topics they will try to see what kind of person are you so which 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 is possible only through opinions see friends in my opinion technology can tell you what is best for you only based on data you have to feed in some data for the mobile app whatever technology based on the data it will do some calculation it gives some output but the data which you are feeding in technology how can you ensure it's always true some things in fact cannot be fed it cannot be fed for example emotions cannot be put in form of data or your ideas your intelligence cannot be put in form of data all the things cannot be taken by the technology only few things it will take based on that it will judge about you definitely the judgment is not comprehensive in most cases it may not be correct this is my opinion about using technology for self discovery so i see my opinion is that technology cannot really tell about yourself completely this is my opinion now i have to prove it so to prove it i am using data i am telling the technology is purely based on data and data how can you ensure the data is always correct in that way i am showing in evidence to prove my opinion i am telling in evidence an example okay hence technology helps only to an extent only similarly friends these days these days google gives you recommendations some some certain kinds of ads will be displayed based on your browsing habit youtube will recommend such as such certain videos so based on your browsing habit they will tell you what is best for you in fact this youtube or twitter facebook or you know instagram or google whatever they constantly tell you what you have to do what is best for you so that you will start believing it for example let us say i am a person who used to celebrate ugadi more passionately but gradually because of this i started celebrating new year more than my actual ugadi means i am changing basically so technology is changing people because as constantly tells you that this is best for you this is what you are this is what I recommend to you as you spend more time with that you will be changed continuously this is my opinion then friends repeatedly if anybody tells you repeatedly that you are this you are this you like this you will start believing it you will start believing yes i am that only that's what uh, i like the most so here technology is controlling the human mind technology is controlling the people our minds but who is control technology some multinational companies so the companies are con are control technology through technology they are they are controlling the human minds that we should understand that's why we should not become slave of technology technology should be our slave that's what you have to you have to you know tell because this is technology is telling you what you have to buy where you have to buy what you have to eat what you have to read whom you have to marry technology is telling you which should not be the case so we are becoming so much dependent on technology and friends now specifically i want to focus on social media because mostly self discovery is happening through social media for example you can write any example these days you, you see many youth are becoming many young people are becoming even kids also becoming popular through tiktok through facebook through instagram you call them she is tiktok star he is youtube star he is you know facebook star something like that because of more followers views whatever so people are building a personality in the social media and based on the comments that they are getting they are discovering themselves but this kind of thing may fall suddenly the social media which is making some people famous overnight is also making you know is also leading to their fall overnight in such cases they go into depression frustration because they never originally understood who they are their personality is based on social media posts and comments for example friends even celebrities also they are celebrities only because of social media because of the online platforms that's how social technology is controlling that's how many people are discovering themselves through technology this can lead to depression 
friends however there are some positive examples also as i told you you should not write only negative aspects give some positive in between for example see you might be knowing about you know lisi priya lisi priya from manipur she is just 8 years old she actually realized that she has passion for saving environment stopping climate change that's what she felt about herself and she wants to exhibit it tell it to everybody that see you have to save environment so she used technology she used social media through which she became popular as an environmental activist in fact recently also she attended cop 25 that happened in madrid she went to madrid the cop that happened in the madrid she became pretty famous but here her passion she realized but where did she get inspiration from she got inspiration from greta thunberg she is also an 18 years 18 years old girl 18 years old girl from sweden who actually became popular because of continuous strikes she asked the national leaders to think about environment to stop the climate change even uh, lindsay priya who got inspired from greta thunberg actually asks for a climate law to the government of india climate law so in one way what is happening is because of this uh, online social media people like greta thunberg are able to inspire many others one of them is lindsay priya she will be inspiring many others gradually the inspiration will spread and as more people understand about climate change they fight for environment obviously countries nations will bring climate laws and we start uh, giving importance to the environment which is helpful in that way technology can be useful for self discovery in certain cases but here technology is only a part of their self discovery now friend another very important aspect self discovery but discovery of a different identity for, for example actually my identity is maybe i eat rice or maybe i wear this kind of clothes i have an identity but because of i told you already because of technology social media country recommendations i am discovering something different about me previously i am I, i used to eat one kind of food one kind of dressing habits one kind of thinking but now i'm changing previously i was secular but now i am becoming communal because of repeatedly seeing certain type of youtube videos or reading certain type of posts i may become communal previously i used to think entire india you know is my land everybody is same but now i may become more narrow more parochial regionalism may come in me if i follow one kind of facebook post if i join in one particular facebook group or one kind of instagram somewhere group if i follow their post i may change that's what we call it as discovering different here i'm telling negative aspects there can be positive way also okay so friends identifying yourself with you know with different dressing habits different food habits materialism consumerism and some people are finding happiness in online games previously they used to play outside which is healthy psychologically and, and mentally and physically but now they are getting addicted to online gaming in fact they are discovering themselves their identity is based on online gaming as they play online game very well they get very good comments and they feel happy about that and they feel that they are basically born to become star in online games similarly coding also and some are actually going into wrong aspects because of technology they are inspired to go in wrong aspects feeling that as heroic having drugs or smoking is heroic friends you know as i told you casteism insurgency regionalism these can also be incited among the people to technology and some people identify themselves as a terrorist i mean as somebody who is fighting for a cause which is actually wrong irrational but they feel themselves because they are into technology they join certain group which incited them to do that and you can read examples of some indians who are recruited by isis for jihad it recruited them through social media only it is, is able to brainwash them and uh, made they means they discovered themselves differently because of the technology now some people create false web personality outside they are different but on social media they do very good social media management they make the very good videos and they showcase themselves as a very nice humble you know person to the outside world false web personality through wrong propaganda is also happening is also happening now friend i would like to stop here stop here regarding the personal level self discovery at the personal level i'm stopping here now self discovery means self discovery how india discovered itself how history of india we discovered through technology technology like for example 3d imaging is used to understand the to investigate the old remains the historic remains similarly to find the age 
for example i want to place chandragupta maurya which time gautam buddha which time or maybe guptas which time you know harshvardhan which time i want to find the age of different kingdoms different to understand history of india to reconstruct history of india for that i can use radiocarbon dating technologies like ceramic dating in that way self discovery india could understand its own history through technology similarly you can write other aspects also for example how can we understand indian economy india wants to know the present health of indian economy for that again we are based on technology we are using technology for example the credit rating agencies like moody the fitch stand and poor they use certain tools certain data to tell the sovereign rating of india or any corporate any government bonds they will rate based on that you will understand the financial health of the country but friends here my opinion is that we cannot completely believe in that because these agencies have certain tools mathematical modeling they can take only certain data based on that they'll give result but they definitely cannot take all the important relevant data because some things cannot be counted into data and output may not be perfectly correct for example moody is there moody recently has changed the india sovereign rating from baa3 to baa2 for example if they give the rating stable then obviously india can borrow cheap we can borrow the money from outside for cheap low cost there's advantage so friends basically even economy also to understand to discover economy we are dependent on technology geography also see in economy for example the rating will based on what how much non performing assets assets are there what is the inflation level what is the gdp growth how much employment is there how many jobs are created all these things will be fed in now friends coming back to geography even geography india self discovered its geography using technology obviously for example you want to know the water resources how much ground water is there so you can use geographical geographical information system technology of remote sensing or you want to understand the climate or forecast the climate weather you can use doppler radar technology to understand to to study the minerals to discover the minerals the mineral deposits you can use technology of eighth born gravity electromagnetic survey and many more and friends to discover about our environment india wants to know self discover the environment status how good is the air how good is the water for water you can you can use the tds totally dissolvable salts tds tds meter or air quality index between 0 to 500 it will calculate and tell how much pollution is there how many pollutants are there the color will change basically based on the various polluting gases in that way friends in that way you can write different aspects of self discovery of a nation also using technology now how do i conclude see definitely as i told you in the beginning never conclude in a you know unidimensionally try to consider both so i would say that technology can be used for self discovery but human wisdom comes first technology should be our slave we have to keep technology at our disposal 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 so basically human wisdom and technology shall be balanced to discover ourselves and we should conduct technology for self discovery friends it can technology can never be a replacement for introspection introspection is the best thing technology can only be complementary in that way i will be ending this essay friends and friends one more thing i forgot to tell you see as we are telling how technology can actually help in self discovery you have to give some good positive examples so among the positive examples i forgot to mention the example of stephen hawking friends stephen hawking has got a rare disease because because of which he cannot speak he cannot walk he cannot talk i mean he cannot even read things properly but technology helped him to read things properly helped him to express himself you may be knowing that leaving stephen hawking aside even several blind people because of technology are able to learn read several things through which they are able to discover themselves similarly stephen hawking is able to express his opinion and get the feedback from the audience and again based on that mold his opinion again express like that is able to interact using technology that actually helped him discover himself so there are many positive examples like this where technology was kept you know uh, was used by many people to discover themselves okay so friends anyhow this is a conclusion with this you can end the essay now let us come to the second essay 
second essay also has got two statements your perception of me is a reflection of you that means for example uh, take a situation maybe take democracy what is your perception of democracy it may be different from others perception on democracy different from somebody else's so democracy is same but the perceptions are different which clearly shows that your perception will tell about yourself what kind of person you are similarly my reaction to you is an awareness of me so it's like reaction for example something happens a situation happens in the situation different people react differently so our reaction actually tells how aware we are for example in during the non cooperation movement everything was going you know using satyagraha and non violence as per the principles of gandhi however a chaura chauri satyain satyagrahis were incited by the british because of which they attacked the police station and killed certain police people now different leaders at that time c r das motilal nehru and other leaders felt that we have to continue the non cooperation that is their reaction but gandhi's reaction is different he felt that indians as of now are not ready for the non violent struggle and the chaura chauri incident is against his conscious his principle so he stopped the ncm that is his reaction so your reaction will tell about your awareness levels that's how it will be so any of friends so for every essay as i told you in the beginning i will be explaining the meaning of the essay how i understand friend how you understand you have to express that meaning very clearly at the end of the day clarity matters whether your understanding is right or wrong is secondary whatever you understood are you able to maintain clarity in that that's what they will see so i want to tell you once again just like the previous essay this me you are you this is not not only about a person friend it can be about a country it can be about a situation also so so that you can write broadly you can bring in more points if you confine it to a single person you me means only single person your overall essay would be very much narrowed so do not do that similarly explain the statement what you understand in the beginning itself beginning itself you explain clearly like how i explained what i understood by the two statements similarly you explain what you understand and then friends it is always better if you can um, explain the statement once again through a story or through a current of example for example i can explain the same statement using some story of buddha see gautam buddha you know he was a prince but later after the realization you know he started preaching to the people and going around the country during the time he used to for the food he used to do begging so when he was begging for alms once he approached a householder that particular householder that particular householder let us see what is his perception of buddha see his perception of buddha was that buddha was once a prince but now he became a beggar so the household actually perceived buddha as a useless person who left all the property and became a beggar so from this perception you can tell what kind of person he is because buddha the same buddha is perceived differently by different people some people perceived him as a sage as a saint as a great person who has no desires who left the kingdom but this householder perceived him as a useless person so this is a reflection of the householder so first statement is explained now second statement let us see how buddha reacted that householder started insulting buddha insulting buddha now let us see how buddha reacted friends buddha's reaction will tell you the awareness levels of buddha buddha's reaction is that his reaction his reaction was at the time his reaction was see if somebody gives gift to me if i take the gift the gift uh, becomes mine but if i reject the gift then the gift stays with you similarly whatever scolding or insult that you are trying to do on me i am not taking them 
that means they stay with the same person so that's so this reaction of buddha shows his awareness so in that way through the example i explain both how perception is reflection and reaction is an awareness similarly instead of personal level at the national level i can explain the same cons the same statement using the recent current affairs for example few years ago india accorded accorded mfn status to pakistan so what is india's perception towards pakistan friend though there is some enmity between india and pakistan though there is some enmity india pursued pakistan in such a way that in long term we have to become good friends we have to keep aside the differences we have to help each other so that the people and economy of both nations will develop that is a perception of india with which they accorded the most favored nation status see once mfn status accorded to a country now pakistan can export any of its goods to india and india will not discriminate it will treat the goods just like the goods of any other country without any extra tariff or non tariff barriers so this perception of india is a reflection of india it shows how matured india is and how broad minded india is and how peace loving india is however friends what is pakistan's reaction to that the pakistan reaction will tell you the awareness levels of pakistan pakistan reacted by not replicating pakistan did not give mfn status to india that shows the awareness level it shows that pakistan actually wants to continue the enmity with india because pakistan might have felt that continuing enmity with india is is required for pakistan survival that's what they might have thought so with this example one second explain friends the reason why we explain the statement in the essay through examples is because it makes the evaluator feel think very clearly okay this person understood the essay topic for that we explain through the examples now friends once again i would explain my opinion very broadly about the topic for example i would take the first statement perception is reflection so i, I would say that our perception towards any object in situation is a reflection of ourselves but this perception will keep on changing for example my perception towards democracy or my perception towards communism or capitalism today may be different from tomorrow that means the capitalism communism is same only but my perception is changing which means i am changing that's how we can say that our perception towards something is reflection of us reflection of us not only about communism capitalism friend but also society our perception towards society towards wealth towards parents friends may change similar reaction for example today as a teacher i may react towards a children a, a particular student who does a mistake i may respond react angrily by scolding him punishing him but tomorrow after a few months or years i may change my awareness levels may change when a student does a mistake i may try to counsel him try to understand why he has done that mistake and accordingly solve the problem so that in future he will not do it so as you understand my reaction will be changing because my emotional intelligence my ability to manage the emotions understand the emotions may change so that means my awareness levels is changing that means my reaction depends upon my awareness levels like that i am trying to give the evidence for the statement whatever statement whatever meaning i felt i am giving evidence for it through this opinion now friends let us take each statement and write two to three pages on that first statement our perception towards anything is a reflection of ourselves we will take the statement now to explain the statement we will take different dimensions international economic polity like that for example first take national dimension see india wants to become a permanent member of united nations security council this is pursued differently by china differently by uk differently by france for example france is happy if india becomes unsc pm member that means france wants to continue good relation with india and france is ready to cooperate it, it, it france actually wants other countries to develop along with them but china does not want uns membership to india because china does not want any other asian country to grow other than china china want to be in the dominating position so from this we can say that the same situation is same india becoming member but the perception will reflect about the country the perception of france reflects what kind of country france is perception of china reflects what kind of country china is 
similarly for example pakistan pakistan is a country that is actually encouraging terrorism everyone knows that however previously usa used to fund pakistan now china is funding pakistan so now many other countries are actually against pakistan because of terrorism in pakistan that shows that those countries which are against pakistan are those countries which are standing by the principle that terrorism in whatever form shall not be encouraged however china is perceiving pakistan the perception of china towards pakistan is that a positive which shows that china is least bothered about the principles it just want to dominate the asia in whatever way possible south asia whatever way possible so friends that's how you know the same Uh, line can be explained instead of countries you can take some issues for example many corporates and several european countries even usa is you know encouraging ever greening of patent for example any drug is invented for any disease for 5 years there will be patent but again they'll slightly change the drug again extend the patent 10 15 20 years so that they can get more profits that is called ever greening of patent india is again as that now ever greening of patent is an issue USA's perception is they are okay with it which means the, from that what can you reflect on USA USA is a country or many other countries they give more importance to profit than the lives whereas India does not encourage ever greening India stands for compulsory licensing of the drugs particularly life saving drugs particularly again is the life threatening diseases which shows that India is a country which stands more by the saving of lives than the profits so that is a reflection of the country similarly friends see you can write for example take a student the same student in india and france he will be rated differently in india maybe the academic system of india education system of india may give rating to the person based on how much he remembered he is able to buy heart able to reproduce so his rating may be 7 out of 10 same student in france may get 9 out of 10 because there they check his practical thinking his logical ability his originality so what is happening the student is same but the perception is different so the perception is a reflection of the education system so in india education system is mostly encouraging by hearting and reproducing whereas the france they are encouraging or sweden or denmark they are encouraging mostly the originality and creativity and rational thinking so using this particular paragraph i not only try to explain the statement in the question but i am also trying to tell my suggestion that the change is required in the india's education system so friend that's how in the essay sometimes you can bring your ideas indirectly to score more marks now let us continue some more examples of the same thing the perception is a reflection some more examples you can take some current of the example for example india's concern in the world trade organization india stand on subsidies on fisheries india stand or you know peace clause or ict law so these issues some countries are perceiving them positively which reflects that those are developing countries some countries are pursuing it negatively they do not want that which shows that its reflection it shows that those countries are mostly developed countries see based on the perception you can tell what kind of countries they are now for example take kyoto protocol and environment kyoto protocol us many countries accepted it they became members of it part of it but us has withdrawn which shows that those countries which are accepting kyoto protocol are those countries which give more importance to environmental conservation even if it slightly affects their economy but usa is not a member which shows that usa gives more importance to economic development they don't want to compromise even at the cost of environmental you know pollution problems so that way perception will reflect what kind of country it is similarly for women take any social issue i am taking women some men their perception towards women may be only that of beauty that's the only thing they will judge whereas some men may judge the qualities skills capabilities in the women so the women is same but how do you perceive the women is a reflection of you your mindset ideology mindset similarly friends in constitution you take anything i am taking uniform civil code for example certain sections of people may not agree with the uniform civil code they may think that different religions are different their cultures are different so civil code shall be different but some pursue that see though every religion have their own civil code there should be uniformity it should not affect certain things like women empowerment for example triple talaq was banned by supreme court in a judgment that was accepted by some people it's pursued positively by some pursued negatively by some 
based on perception you can reflect and tell what kind of people they are similarly friend you take an example in science technology i have taken mission on mars few years ago when india sent mission to mars some sections felt that why should we spend so much money on the mission to mars the same money can be spent on poverty er er eradication or hunger uh, reduction in the hunger deaths so in that way so that is one perception that tells what kind of people they are whereas some felt that see we have spent very less amount in the mission on mars compared to usa and technology is a future if we invest more in technology in future that is going to solve the same poverty hunger problems so this perception tells what kind of thinking advanced progressive thinking progress thinking that these have got similarly you can take again society low marriage is accepted by some they feel that in fact they pursue low marriage as the best way of marriage some pursue low marriage as the worst way of marriage worst way of marriage so situation is same but perception is changing that is reflection of your mindset your principles your ideology similarly friends even honor killings also uh, you know generally you have rejected it but some people are doing that in economy some people accept communism some people pursue capitalism as a positive one that tells what kind of people they are now friends after explaining the first statement let us come to second statement here reaction shows awareness means your reaction to different things will show how aware you are for example gandhi ji in south africa apartheid was there for quite some time different people reacted differently but gandhi ji's reaction is that of non violence satyagraha same thing applied see british suppression in india is happening from several years some people reacted by petitions some reacted in a violent way but gandhi's reaction is that of non violence satyagraha which shows awareness of gandhi gandhi knows that through violence first of all difficult to defeat british second thing through violence even if you get independence such an independence afterwards also the culture of violence will continue but if you follow non violence even if independence takes some more time once you get independence india will be a peaceful country that encourages non violence it will become a good culture of india that is the awareness of gandhi so based on the reaction you can tell the awareness similarly friend take sachin tendulkar in cricket you know some teams actually sledge the batsman sledging we call it as to demoralize the batsman some batsman react to it violently and then get out some actually you know start scolding the opponent team whereas sachin's reaction towards sledging is that of keeping his cool and answering replying only by his bat so that way of reaction shows his awareness levels for example in a relationship between wife and husband for example based on your awareness levels you will respond or react to the mistakes done by the spouse based on that the relation can be made or it can be broken also so like that reaction depends upon your awareness levels some more examples you can tell is for example government passed a bill any act or policy and some section of people are protesting against it then how would you respond to it how does government react the government's reaction to the protest will tell the awareness levels of the government you can take any example and explain this similarly friends i told you in the beginning of the essay during the chaura chauri incident different leaders felt that we should not stop ncm but gandhi's reaction is you have to stop ncm because you cannot continue with violence and india is not ready for non violent struggle that reaction tells his awareness levels similarly women for example friend women has reservation in the local governance panchayat and municipalities how do you react some men react negatively they do not want women to become powerful and dominating some feel gender equality they react in the way accepting they react by accepting it some react by exploiting it for example i want to exploit that i will make my wife or mother sister you know in get get them into uh, sarpanch or uh, municipal whatever and i will take their power that is actually called sarpanch pati concept so in that way the reaction tells your awareness levels friends having explained both sides the the having explained the both uh, statements given in the essay we will conclude i always prefer to conclude by giving suggestions which are useful for india useful for the nation at the same time in a positive note for example perception is a reflection of you reaction reaction is an awareness of you both perception and reaction should be molded 
right from the childhood if you want to create better citizens better india you have to educate the children in the curriculum you have to develop good perception towards democracy perception towards conservation environment perception towards respecting elders perception towards you know tolerance and equality and always trying to help the vulnerable sections and positive perception towards women towards friendship so you know towards peace so that kind of perception shall be developed from childhood similarly reaction also how do you respond to crime against women how do you respond for example for the climate change how do you respond for you know violation of traffic rules so your response towards democracy towards communism capitalism that response depends upon awareness levels so the perception and awareness have to be increased or maybe it has to become better it can become better only when the school family society social media mass media all of them create that positive perception among the people so that we can make a better india in that way friends i would love to conclude this essay let us go to third essay now the topic given in the third essay is philosophy of wantlessness is utopian while materialism is chimera so friends wantlessness means not having any desires means not really wanting any material things is called wantlessness that's what is practiced by mahavir jain buddha and some many other sages so utopian actually utopian is an ideal perfect world which is not real i mean we would like the world to be in that way but in reality is not possible is called utopian so wantlessness is utopian means uh people not having any desires complete wantlessness if we are staying in such kind of world really it will be like utopian utopia it will be utopia perfect world but in reality it is not possible it's not possible for any of us to maintain complete wantlessness lack of any desires is good but it's very difficult almost impossible that is the meaning of the first part of the statement second part materialism is a chimera actually chimera has several meanings chimera as generally you know is a um, ancient greek mythology animal it's, it's a mythology it's not real and real uh, creature means it has a body of an animal face of a um, uh, woman something like this so it is a strange animal generally you don't find it anywhere so though you want to find it you cannot find it so materialism actually materialism is having desire means want to uh, have more of material it can be having more of uh, you know uh, more property more wealth more cars or whatever whatever and there is no end to it though you try to achieve more and more material like how you can never find chimera though you chase for chimera you can never find it like that though you want to find happiness by getting more and more wealth more material you can never be satisfied it is a never ending process that is the meaning of second statement so this is a overall uh, 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 statement given in the third essay so not having any desires is like uh, not possible and if you have desire it is never ending this is idea so friends for this kind of essays i would say in the beginning itself you try to explain the meaning and let me tell you i want to repeat this some of you may understand the meaning of the essay differently for example i understood the meaning in one way you may understand slightly in a different way but that's okay whatever way you understand you explain that meaning you clearly explain what you mean by the essay the advantage of that is if you understand even in a slightly wrong way also if you can explain that in the beginning itself and then if you write the essay evaluator will only see okay this student understood the essay in this way now let us study how he you know how he is able to support his thought support his idea what examples he gave how beautifully he presented so that's what they see so i would suggest you to explain very clearly the beginning itself don't keep it ambiguous i mean don't uh, uh, leave the evaluator not very clear some some students how they think is okay as i did not understand the meaning completely let me not explain it let me put the evaluator in confusion and write all the things that comes to my mind that is not a good idea according to me so and how do you structure this kind of essays i would suggest you that friend see for example first statement is there you take the first statement explain that 
wantlessness is utopian you tell whether wantlessness is good or not to what extent it is possible wantlessness for example complete wantlessness not having any desire is impossible almost so try to explain both sides tell how wantlessness is good same time how wantlessness is impossible tell both similarly materialism tell why materialism is required to an extent also tell why excessive materialism is harmful in that way each statement write both sets of statement that would be the structure of the essay towards the end you write your opinion your stand on the essay whatever or in the beginning also you can write a stand for example my stand is that you have to take the middle path like how buddha says in buddhism they say middle path extremes ex for example extreme wantless impossible and mindless materialism is also not a good idea take a middle path so i would say i would actually tell my stand very clearly in the beginning of the essay only in the second or third paragraph i would say that you know you have to avoid two extremes you know complete indulgence in the sensual process is not a good thing similarly severe ascetism is also not a good idea so try to have a balance try to have materialism to an extent required for human progress and uh, you know uh, to human satisfaction and happiness now friends i am taking here the first statement see though i have mentioned some points here in the actual examination i would be writing paragraphs for example first two points i can write one paragraph next point one paragraph one paragraph like that i would be expanding each point into a paragraph but as here in this video i am just telling you the ideas different points you can write in the essay i am just mentioning them in the point format in the real essay you have to write paragraphs and you have to explain them very clearly you cannot just write a point like how i mentioned so friends now i am going to explain means i am going to write in the essay why wantlessness is good wantlessness is really an idea suggested by almost all the religious scriptures you take bible quran or buddhism jainism or bhagavad gita mostly they suggest wantlessness because most of them say that a person who he, who has a wantlessness will be peaceful would be happy he has no grief this idea of many religious scriptures for example peace is possible through detachment is what is said by most scriptures similarly in buddhism you know uh, buddha actually says that the all the grief or sadness that you are getting is because of desire because of attachment to something attachment to a person or an emotion or to a thing or situation or to an outcome whatever so similarly in jainism they use the word aparigraha so there they clearly mention that you should be detached to all these things only then you can lead a peaceful life then friends in bhagavad gita also they say nish nishkam karma whatever work you do don't expect any kind of outcome just do the work by detachment just for sake of doing the work that's all now if you want to give you know uh, some if you want to create a context for this topic you can say that if you have want if you have wantlessness you can no more be selfish whatever you do in your life it will be cooperative because you would like everybody to grow along with you but more you know more want you have more desire you have you will become more selfish you will be not ready to cooperate one example we can give is india always stood for non alignment movement and where we worked together with all the countries to work together to with all the countries to develop whereas nato or soviet union are one sided they want to develop more than the other country unnecessary competition no cooperation enmity will increase that is the reason why soviet union fell down even nato is not so successful in 21st century whereas nam now nam 2.0 is uh, quite successful in 21st century also or you can write your own opinion like that you know write some example related to wantlessness then friends even in the medieval india in the ancient india i wrote about buddhism jainism medieval india also sufism bhakti movement preach the wantlessness so this wantlessness philosophy is there in the indian religion scripture whatever indian culture it is there from quite a long time now friends even ashoka in ancient history ashoka after the kalinga war his mindset slightly changes of course there are different explanations on that but one of the explanation 
one of the explanation is that ashoka actually thought that uh, you know having more property having more kingdoms under his control having more land under his control winning more wars can never bring peace so he changes his style after he wins the kalinga war but kalinga war leads to large scale destruction which ashoka uh, could not digest because of which his mindset changes you can explain about that even chandragupta maurya also one of the greatest kings of ancient indian history he also towards end of his life leaves the kingdom joins in jainism goes to shravan bilgala that shows how he understood that ultimate peace and satisfaction happiness comes only from wantlessness that's how you can explain the first statement in different dimensions and angles now friends the same statement you can counter the statement also counter means you can say that complete wantlessness lack of all the desires impossible some materialism is required some materialism is required. why friends because see if you completely lack the desire completely do not want anything then how can human civilization progress how can you invent new things technology for example we invented electricity we invented you know the tra better transportation facilities train and you want to improve it then flight better transportation or people staying in the extreme cold areas heater or extreme hot areas air cooler so invention you know uh, technology has to progress only the human civilization can progress so materialism is required to the extent required for human progress otherwise civilization comes to a standstill it stagnates so in that way you can actually explain why materialism is required to extend for example you can write two or three paragraphs on how human beings want better infrastructure you know better health care for food security you should have technology to grow more food more food to increase the yield and equipment to stay in extreme climates so many things you can actually i mentioned three or four you can write more things so in this way you have to explain that materialism and uh, you know the human idea to excel in every field is required so wantlessness should be there only to extent where it does not lead to selfishness but overall growth that kind of wanting desire is required required to explain it better to explain it better actually i have this is see i am into i am using this idea but you may write some other idea also so to explain how desire at a personal level selfish desire may not be a good idea but desire that helps in the national growth society growth or family growth for example to, to extend is good for example gandhi is there even gandhi has got desire which desire has got to have freedom independence such a desire he has got village development rural development equality between all the castes and religions these desires he has got but those desires are for national development overall happiness he does not have any personal desire of accumulation of wealth that's why he is able to become a great leader similarly abdul kalam also abdul kalam is a great nuclear scientist he is able to develop rockets missiles etc so he has a desire to make india a nuclear power to make india a great space power even sadish dawan also however abdul kalam never have any selfish desire to accumulate wealth or to achieve power for himself he does not have that so such kind of desires are meaningful and required abdul kalam he more than this also she always wanted better health infrastructure better medicines to treat not only leprosy any kind of health problem so that desire is there but a personal level for personal glory and growth she never has got any desire so such kind of desires really we need to encourage and they are required for human progress even manik sarkar see friends i am writing this example but you may or may not write it depends upon you see manik sarkar who was the cm of uh, tripura from almost for, for 20 years almost 1998 to 2018 he does not even today he does not own a car does not own a house though cm for 20 years leading a very simple life so such kind of people see he is chief minister which shows that he has desire for power but he has desire for power only if to develop the state he does not have desire for power to develop himself such kind of desire is required this is some one or two pages i'll write on these aspects then i will move on to the opposite till now i said that materialism is good to an extent now i'm telling you mindless materialism excessive materialism is harmful on that i would be writing some two pages i'll write some paragraphs on disasters paragraphs on these things for example 
Uttarakhand floods. Uttarakhand is a Himalayan state. Development is important, but excessive development, cutting down all the forests, cutting down the mountain slopes, and developing it actually led to Uttarakhand floods. In such a way, mindless materialism, excessive desire for development, even at the cost of environment, leads to disasters. Even droughts in some of the places is because of deforestation, access to exploitation of water. You can write many examples in that aspect. Friends, similarly, mindless materialism, too much materialism, excess of desire, slowly will take away your ethics. Your values will not be there. You will start, the only thing you want is to achieve more power, more wealth. You have desire for external things. Okay, that actually harms the very human existence in the long term. Similarly, Gandhi's quote, you can write, for example, you can say that nature has enough for everybody's need. Everybody has need. Everybody has to satisfy their needs. But satisfying their greed, nature does not have enough to satisfy anybody's greed. In this, this quotation actually says that materialism is okay till you satisfy your needs. But excessive materialism to satisfy greed, greed will harm the entire human existence. Similar, for example, you can write about you know green revolution. Actually, green revolution is good. Food security is required. Fertilizer is must. However, excessive fertilizers, more synthetic pesticides, you know, the excessive mineralism is again harmful. It leads to soil degradation. Similarly, transportation is important, industrialization is important, but excessive of them at the cost of environment leading to pollution is harmful. Similarly, friends, business is important for the nation, politics is important, bureaucracy is important, but you know, excessive, for example, any bureaucrat, politician or businessman who actually wants to grow at the cost of society, at the cost of nature, environment, more selfishness or nexus among them is again harmful. For example, China. China these days, you know, is going for neo imperialism. For example, what they have done to Sri Lanka and Pakistan, you know very well, you can explain about that. How they made those countries depend on China. China wants, China has that, uh, it wants to expand, it's, uh, uh, it wants to expand not through the uh, uh, land colonialism, but economic colonialism, economic colonies, and that is excessive materialism, it's mindless materialism. Even, see, for example, all of us have got some trust on the religions, but certain godmen who are using religion in order to earn more wealth or possess more power is actually eroding the trust. That again comes under the example of mindless materialism. Like their friends, you don't need to give only these examples. You take some topics, try to counter. For example, one, pa one page you write why materialism is required for human progress. Next, why, how mindless materialism, excessive, is harmful for the same human progress in that way. Again, to explain it better, in fact, I would be writing some example of how to strike the balance between required materialism, excessive materialism. How to draw a line, for example, see, the re so one of the reasons, though there are many explanations for the origin of COVID, definitely one of the reasons for COVID is excessive and mindless materialism. However, how do you face the COVID development of vaccine that actually requires good healthcare facility, good infrastructure, laboratories for research that is required materialism. That is required materialism. Similarly, nuclear. Nuclear power, research in the nuclear power is important so that we can meet the electricity demand, power demand throughout the world. However, using the same nuclear technology to develop the weapons to destroy destruction of human uh, civilization is harmful. So you have to strike a balance between required materialism, mindless materialism. For example, Green Revolution, I told you, corporates are growing by taking help from society, people, nature, government, whatever. So they have to contribute, give back something in the form of corporate social responsibility. So this is a required materialism. Friends, this example again is, you know, an example which I want to write. But when you write this kind of examples, be very careful that you can explain clearly because sometimes it may convey wrong meaning also. For example, my idea is that when joint families were there, 
joint families ethics were there among, ethics were there among people moral values are there they used to cooperate develop together selfishness was not there they want to accumulate wealth for the overall growth but once the nuclear families came unnecessary competition among the brothers and sisters and family members led to jealous selfishness and mindless materialism so that's how i want to explain this one you should be careful while explaining this kind of things then friends i always like to conclude any essay by giving some suggestions you have to provide some suggestions and some good you know quotations whatever for example i would say that you know we have to strike a balance between the required materialism and mind materialism but how do you strike the balance how how do people know what is a balance that again comes from right education education in the curriculum in the academics only it should be clearly mentioned given how to apply technology or whatever you learned in such a way it helps the society to grow but not to destroy society so friends actually we need greater good and human progress through material desire material desire is material desire is good is required but only for the human progress and society's development as a whole so ethics have to be taught at all levels at corporate level school level college everywhere so that everybody knows very clearly to what extent they have to be attached or to what extent they have to work to succeed or materialistic needs are required to what extent their balance should be you know it, it is a long process it's an awareness generation continuous counseling but it's required society similarly vivekananda says that education is meaningful only when you can apply it for the development of the overall nation or society rather than just cramming the information and not doing any good for society so friends not on this one you can use other quotes whatever you want but my idea is in the conclusion try to you know tell a suggestion on the essay topic given this is how you can conclude friends now so spend some two to three pages on each of these uh, points that I, that i have discussed so that you can make a 10 page essay or eight to nine page essay so now coming to the fourth essay topic in the fourth essay just like the previous essay they have given two statements in a single line so if you observe it one statement is the real is rational second one is the rational is real so friends again i am just repeating it you no need to know who is the thinker who gave this statement for example political science students may be knowing that this is a statement given by the famous thinker named hegel so political science students may know what hegel means by this statement in what context hegel wrote this statement so as a counter to immanuel kant or to aristotle so what does hegel mean so all these things they may be able to write but in fact students who do not know the context of the topic who do not know what the thinker means even you can write what you understand from the statement still you will get the same marks so friends don't think about whether you have any knowledge on it or not just see whether you are able to understand the statement in your own way you explain the meaning you give examples towards the end you give suggestions and like the normal style of the essay writing you write some paragraphs supporting the statement at the same time write some paragraphs again as a statement finally conclude with your opinion so i am not going to use any philosopher's name thinker's name or i am not going to you know use the context in which he told that i am just going to tell what i understand from the statement and what we can write okay so what do i understand see real is rational means anything that is really existing around us any reality can be rationally explained can be rationally logically explained that is the meaning of real is rational similarly rational is real means whatever you can rationally explain whatever is logical scientific anything that is real anything that is logical or rational will be real that is a, a meaning that i understand from this statement so friend see you can write for example i feel that rational means logically scientifically thinking something is called rational real means what we can perceive whether what we can see with our eyes or listen or you can sense smell is called real so with this meaning i have constructed the statement in this way 
this is what i understand from the statement anything that is real can be logically explained anything that can logically explain will be real only there is a meaning okay like how i said friend either you can start the essay by explaining the meaning or initially you can start with a story a small paragraph so that it will be interesting to the evaluator and then in the next paragraph you can explain the meaning of how you understand it for example see the story that i would be writing is that some 2500 years ago during socrates time or galileo time during the time you know most of the people used to think that earth is at the center of the universe is called geocentric theory so at the time for them geocentric theory is a reality that is real according to them but some scientists felt that any reality you should be able to explain rationally but at that time many people believed in geocentric theory but nobody is able to logically explain it that's why though some scientists who can think far ahead of their generation they felt that see it is not real geocentric theory is not real because you are unable to explain rationally first statement second statement now they those scientists actually proposed heliocentric theory as they are able to explain something rationally heliocentric heliocentric theory means sun is at center of solar system as those scientists are able to explain logically about the sun being at center that's why it is reality so understand so here i'm covering both for example real is rational right real is rational first statement now they used to feel geocentric theory is reality but it is not rational no hence it is not real next what second statement rational is real right so heliocentric theory is something that they explained using some mathematics whatever at the time tools they have as they are able to rationally explain heliocentric theory hence it is real so in that way the given statement i will explain with some example this is a this is a story that i would be using in fact according to me all the scientists any scientist believes in this one that anything which is existing around us we should be able to explain rationally so i, I that's why i wrote all scientists are products of you know the same thought they believe in this one after writing the story then i would be you know explaining the meaning of the statement that way also we can do and i would be structuring this essay like any other essay what i would do is i will take the first statement first statement i would write some paragraph supporting it and some paragraphs against it then i will take second statement i will write some paragraph supporting and some against then towards the end i will generally in every essay i suggest that you have to give some suggestions which is useful for india nation or humanity as a whole so i would be explaining the importance of thinking rationally why should we think rationally and also how can you inculcate rational thinking among the youth or children children okay this is this will be my structure of the essay so let us start with the first statement real is rational now friends real is rational now supporting this statement i would i will i will tell few examples i will explain in some theoretical way see i would be saying that newton when he has seen the apple falling down many would have seen things falling down onto the earth but newton felt that okay things are falling on the earth it is real so it should be rationally explained so he tried to explain it rationally and that's how he came up with the gravitational force formula or gravity as a whole and before newton also there are some other scientists who thought the same as things are falling there should be something and they found gravity but newton is able to develop a good formula for that so so here i am trying to explain that anything that is real is rational okay similarly friend not only newton we also if we believe that any reality around us is rational we will try to explain that logically that's how we are able to develop the theory for how himalayas are formed how oceans are formed how clouds are formed you know how lakes are formed anything around us how they are formed we are able to develop proper theories why because we believe that any reality around us can be rationally explained for example this is one example that i would be frequently using in this essay that is in earlier days 
when somebody is psychologically stressed or they have got mentally ill health then they used to think that evil spirit might have gone into the person why because in reality that person is behaving differently oddly now it should be rational but they did not think it is rational that's why they felt about they thought that evil spirit went in, inside the person but any person who thought that reality is rational okay reality is he is behaving differently so it, it should be rational so if you think in that way rationally you can understand what problem actually stressed him so much that he became psychologically ill only then you can you'll be able to solve the problem make again the person normal person so similarly friends as i told you all scientists are products of same thinking <coughs> now friends see if the things happening around us i mean the real things the reality happening around us we should question the rationality <coughs> we should ask is it rational or not if it is rational go ahead otherwise stop that one so that's how you know people like raja ram mohan roy raja ram mohan roy the father of indian renaissance he saw some reality in india sati is reality is happening around but he felt that it is irrational there is no rationality behind it so he questioned it that's how he is able to bring a law with the help of british to completely ban sati similarly even issues in the sagar also Uh, question the rationality behind in those days women were not sent off education widows were not allowed to remarry so he questioned the rationality behind those things and that's how he is able to you know bring the law for remarriage of the widow even they are able to bring the law to stop the child marriages also friends even religion also in religion any religion when you are reading the religious scriptures you should not blindly accept everything you should try to think rationality to some extent of course some aspects you may not be able to understand the rationality behind them but most try to understand if some certain things in the scriptures which we are really practicing every religion we really practice no so if you find something irrational you have to discard it for example they say the in certain sections of muslim population believe that triple talaq is there in the quran but some sections believe that it is not there in quran so if you look at the rationality triple talaq is irrational that's why it is banned by supreme court that's how whatever you go through from surroundings reality question the rationality behind if you think is irrational discard it should not be real <coughs> friends now the second dimension second dimension means the same first statement only real is rational i explained supporting it now i'll be explaining again as it i'll be saying real may not be rational real but not rational so all the real may not be rational so how do i explain that first i would use emotions friends most of the emotions for example if i love some object or some person or something the same thing may not be loved by others in fact others may even not understand why i love that particular situation or person or thing that means there may not be any rationality behind that most of our emotions may not have any kind of rationality we should not even look to understand the rationality because that's that is a difference of between emotions and any scientific thing so friends not only love happiness taste even relations even spirituality also spirituality you can feel it but you cannot you cannot understand the rationality so there are are some things which are really there around us which about which we cannot explain rationally similarly friends harmony see in the universe many things are there there is harmony in the universe of course we can explain to some extent scientifically we can explain why sun rises in the east sets in the west why earth rotates from the west to east we can explain some things but some things are beyond our explanation so those things i would say they are real but we cannot explain them rationally with our existing knowledge tomorrow if as we gain more and more knowledge we may be able to explain rationally see i told you no friend immanuel kant actually does not believe that real is rational he believes that reality can be irrational also sometimes actually he believes that many things that exist many things exist in the universe we may not even know about them we may not even understand the reason behind them so that's why he says real may not be rational even immanuel kant friends these kind of things you know to write just because i know about this i wrote but you know write this kind of things in fact you can write your general points only still you can score very good marks friends for example see if you take the black hole the studies about the black hole as of now are not complete the way black hole behaves black hole behaves is not completely known but it is real black hole really there even now we do not know the exact locations of black hole so what i'm saying is i'm trying to 
support uh, Immanuel Kant saying that many things that exist we may not even know about them even if you know about them we may not be able to rationally ex rationally explain how black hole behaves why it is bending the light ray we may not be able to okay so that's how that's how I am trying to explain the other side for example friends see a book I, read, I wrote about a book that I know you can read about something else a book secret secret a book is there which says that anything that you really want in your life if you, if you want it strongly entire universe will help you achieving that but this cannot be rationally explained but it's just belief but in reality it is happening around us we are able to see it so it is real but rationally cannot be explained similarly a lot of things will be there a lot of things will be there for example the same uh, a uh, thing is explained by in, uh, you know Shahrukh Khan uses dialogue in um, Om Shanti Om movie that if you really want something enter universe will try to help you and make you achieve that one so like that there are some things which are beyond our rationality beyond our rationality means we cannot actually rationally explain them but we have to accept them only those people having wisdom can accept those things because they are happening in surroundings but unable to explain scientifically. So it is beyond our rationality but it is well within the limits of wisdom. People with wisdom we can understand that they accept that as reality. For example, friend, one theory used by several religions in the last essay also explained you know, Buddhism, Jainism, they say that not having any desires is the best way to lead a happy life. But this seems to be irrational to some people because there is no rational scientific explanation behind it it cannot be explained hence it appears irrational so what but still it is real you can see most of the people who are not having any desires they are leading a very happy life people having so many desires even if they have a lot of wealth and things around them still they are unhappy so that's what i'm saying some things are real but not rational friends for example again sometimes as it there should be a balance friends there should be a balance here some things though you don't understand the rationality you have to follow them some things if it, there is no rationality you have to discard them so how to how do you differentiate them that balance is important for example honesty is the best policy or some ethics integrity these things you may not understand why honesty is the best policy how honest will help you you know our dharma rakshana rakshataha how is it true means many people may not understand the rationality behind but still you have to follow them only then the law and order peace would survive in the world however there are some superstitions superstitions in every religion every culture it will be there such superstitions which are harmful you have to discard them discard them if there is no rationality behind it so superstition itself means anything in the scripture or whatever in the earlier days which cannot be rationally explained scientifically it is wrong such kind of things are called superstitions such things can be such things shall be discarded so you should know which things you have to accept without rationality also which things you have to discard with, with, if there is no rationality so that fine balance is very important then friends I explained the first part both sides first part now taking the second part second part is rational is real this also first I would be supporting this then again as that now friends rational is real means what whatever can be rationally explained we, 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 it will automatically be real that is a statement now this is what is believed by all the scientists so, see all the great scientists in they always think ahead of their generation so in that generation whatever people believe they may not believe that those scientists think rationally as i had explained about the heliocentric theory heliocentric theory the scientists who believed it they are able to rationally think about something so they believed that is real whatever they rationally concluded that is real so rational is real you can you know write explanation of uh, galileo galilei's inventions or what socrates said you can say or a psychological disorder what i said no the same example if anybody has a disorder everybody believes there is evil spirit in the man but you, if you rationally think the reason behind it that will become reality similarly friends even in society also society also uh, most of the naxalites uh, terrorists or people who support them not only these things even the horror killings so these are happening because many are thinking irrationally illogically they are thinking most of what they think is not real most of what they think for example even Ajmal Kasab after he was caught by uh, Indian um, police 
when he was uh, in, uh, you know investigated they found that he felt bad of joining terrorism when he was in prison he felt bad he said that at that time i did not know what is real at that time he could not think rationally he thought irrational at that time that's why what he has done is not reality now he is thinking rationally now he understood the reality so whatever is rational is only real that is the meaning okay friends that's why rational thinking shall be uh, you know uh, inculcated everyone because only if all of us think rationally we can do things that are in real that are in real so article 51a of constitution of india out of all the fundamental duties one of the duty of every citizen of india is to have scientific temper scientific temper means scientific inquiry thinking everything rationally so that things like superstitions and other things can be eliminated the means if everybody of india follows this one then there won't be any superstitions friends superstitions are irrational things that's why they are not real see the idea is rational is real means irrational is not real both are same irrational is not real okay now the same statement opposite way for example till now i said that rational whatever you can rational explain will be real i said no now let us see there are some things which are rational but not real there are some things that are rational but not real for example judgments a judge will take the arguments from different lawyers what are arguments are more rational as per the law constitution of india very rational arguments based on the rationality he will conclude that this this might have happened but that may not be real the judgments given by the judge based on rationality sometimes may not be real that's why president is given pardoning power to override it sometimes similarly friends for example an example generally we have to give some example from the india or international affairs so that you know there is more chance of scoring high for example countries like india china or usa are spending more than required on the defense for example certain amount of gdp percent gdp shall be spent on the defense this much amount is required for the defense for our safety for safety security of the nation but we are spending even more than that even more than that so so we are spending almost irrationally irrationally but when we spend more money we think we will have some aspects in our mind based on that we think that we have to spend this much money this is rational this is spending is rational but that is not real that is not real in order to spend that much amount in fact some of the amount shall be spent on eliminating the hunger problem or poverty problem for example friend even see the after independence many states uh, demanded for linguistic based division of states for example telugu people asked for separate andhra pradesh malayalam people asked for separate kerala kannada people separate karnataka like that marathi people separate maharashtra gujarati gujarat so at the time the you know nehru nehru have formed a committee jvp committee was there that committee felt that pakistan as is separate from india because of difference in the religion similarly if you divide the states based on language they may have separating tendencies sessionism may start that is rational thinking of nehru and other leaders also rationally they thought that if you divide states on based on language they would be separated from india but whatever they thought using rationality is not real reality is if you create states based on linguistic uh, linguistic factor then they would be more stable they would be more cooperating that's what we are seeing today so sometimes what you think is rational may not be real that's explanation that's why later on the state reorganizing committee src committee said that you can actually divide miss not uh, all the states but few states you can divide based on language friends anyhow but src committee is a very broad thing friend better better you do not bring about src because src talks about several things the safety security administration problem economic feasibility financial stability border state security then the, in fact they wanted they wanted larger states in the border for safety so what i'm saying is later on we realized the reality later on we realized before we thought that linguistic states is not a good good idea for stable country 
Also, friends, for example, in 1950s, 51, when first election was conducted, general election in India, many internationally, many famous political thinkers thought that democracy is impossible in India because of the huge size, you know, hills, mountains, people living in forests, deserts, illiteracy was there, illiteracy, and there is no common language. So, democratically choosing leaders is impossible. They felt that India would break into many parts, but it did not happen. Whatever they thought rationally did not happen. The reality is different. Okay, friend, even in those days, no rational person who thought rationally actually can, no rational person thought a person like Gandhi who came from South Africa after several years, who does not have a base in India, can so quickly become a national leader and he can lead the entire nation in the independence struggle. Nobody thought that. No rationally thinking person thought that, but still it is reality. Sometimes, friends, rationality rational what you think may not be real because rationally they thought it's not possible but it, it became possible so friends in that way i would be discussing both sides you don't need to give only my examples you can give your own examples then now i would be telling why rational thinking is important in life why because friends most of the problems in the world or even india if you see it can be for example horn killings communism casteism regime or parochialism or nexalism or terrorism whatever most of these problems in india are because of irrational thinking because of non-scientific illogical thinking they are happening so if you if everybody can think rationally obviously we all will conserve the environment and we all will support the vulnerable sections cooperation will exist everywhere and we can uplift the vulnerable sections like the old the disabled or schedule cash schedule tribes and even the these problems as explained can be solved the fundamentalist problems can be solved and friends superstitions and wrong uh, some I means you know those things which were thought to be there in the religion and scriptures but which are irrational such things can be stopped nobody will follow those things if you all can think rationally but how how can we you know how can we inculcate rational thinking among our people among children or youth first thing is friends right in the curriculum academic curriculum there should be some books written by rational thinkers they should write on various issues happening around us and how should we rationally think about different issues around us and what are right, what are wrong. Those kind of books shall be there in the academic curriculum and experiments. Right from the school days, anything that is thought in the class as much as possible shall be done in the laboratories as experimental basis. Students should experiment and see for themselves whether theory is correct or wrong. That shall be encouraged. Scientific temper shall be inculcated not only by the school, by the family, society, neighbors, media also. For example, media should not propagate the superstitious. For example, astrology is something but astrology as a whole I am not going to discard here maybe to some extent it's okay but you know some uh, certain things which are propagated by the media not only social media friend even the mainline media the electronic media in some print media also is propagating superstitious things which is affecting the rational thinking of the indians that has to be stopped and teachers shall be trained though the books are very good if the teachers themselves are irrationally thinking illogically thinking encouraging the superstitions and following unnecessary rituals which are not correct scientifically children obviously follow the, the, the path of teachers so in the teacher training we have to include rational thinking you should not bring in uh, superstitions in the education similarly friend science tours you have to take the students to research centers museums science laboratories research centers various manufacturing units so that they will develop scientific thinking in fact at from right from the graduation level the academia the the you know the graduation students should have working relationship with the research centers and industries so that they will develop that kind of scientific thinking and we have to spend spend much on the uh, research and development so in this way i would be ending because at the end you have to show that you are a person who support rationality you are a person who says that entire india should think rationally only then we can solve the existing problems that's that, that's how on a positive note giving suggestion you can end in a useful way so friends the next essay part b now we'll come to part b